Hi, this is Tom, amateur radio call sign N at FDY. And today it's time for another meter review. We're doing the Klein MM720. We thought we were done with 6,000 count meters, but lo and behold, here's a 6,000 count meter that you can buy in Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, just go into the store, there'll be one on the rack and you just pick it out. So I decided I should uh, test one and see if they're worth the bother. Uh, they're about a hundred bucks. So we'll see what you get for a hundred bucks. Klein seems to wrap most of their stuff in this kind of blister packy thing. Uh, reminds me of uh, the way uh, Greenlee does it. So maybe that's an American company way of uh, doing your meters. I don't know. So, I already pre-opened it, of course, because I had to test it. Let's see if we can get it out of here. There, it's free. Free at last. So, this was a bear to open. I had to end up just slicing around the uh, perimeter here of the back. Comes with the handy little Karen case. And in here, you got thermocouple. You got some leads with some Cat4 protectors on it. And they are not uh, gold-plated at all. And they are... Um, It's not totally stiff, but they're pretty stiff. So it's your typical low rent uh, leads. But it does come with a printed manual. So that is handy. And comes in a few different languages, so that's why it's so thick. But it's uh, it covers the basics of what you need to know. Let's get this out of the way. It's a little unusual because it has the uh, sender off. So you go to the left and you get the current, you go to the right and you get everything else. And you notice it's a reverse display. So it's a black background with uh, white characters. It also has auto brightness. I don't know if it'll do it for you, but you can override it. There's the uh, auto manual button if you hold it in. So hold it in. Now we're on manual high. Hold it in, you're on manual low, hold it again again, and you're on auto. When it comes on, it defaults to AC, so you have to watch that for your projects. You want to remember to move it back to DC. Let's take a look at the features of this meter. It's third-party tested by ETL for Canada and the United States. It's CAT3 1000 volts and CAT4 600 volts rated. It's true RMS. It has a 0.5% plus 5 basic DC accuracy. Its display has white numbers and symbols on a black background. It has min and max function, has a hold function, has a relative delta function. It has low impedance mode for getting rid of ghost voltages. It's built to withstand a 2 meter drop and it's IP42 rated for ingress protection. It includes a thermocouple and comes with two AAA batteries. And it has a two-year warranty. Now, first, we'll start out with, uh, there's a written review. The link is in the description of the video. And that will uh, have lots of detail. Also, the, um, the way I determine accuracy is I have a... Uh, Keithley uh, DMM 6500 that was uh, calibrated uh, within this year, uh, actually last year, but uh, it hasn't hit its 12 months yet, so it's still good. Um, and I use that to parallel the measurements, voltage and currents, and uh, also all the other measurements, capacitance, resistance, and uh, use that as the judge of what is 
accurate. So it basically all the accuracy is measuring how accurate it is compared to the Keithley, uh, which is a six and a half digit uh, bench meter. So let's get started. Well, this uh, standard measured on the Keithley is 2.5005, and this shows it at 2.500, so it's uh, accurate to its resolution. So that's pretty good. Keithley measured this at 5.0009, and sure enough, 5.000. Again, accurate to its uh, resolution. Keithley measured this at 7.5016. And this is 7.49. Teeny bit off, but it's well within its specifications. The Keithley measured this is 10.0015, and it's 9.99, which is still well within its specifications. Speaking of its specifications, let's take a look at all the tests I did on the bench. The uh, DC volts and DC millivolts all met the accuracy specifications as stated in the manual. Now, admittedly, the accuracy is only 0.5% plus 5, so it's, it should be easy for it to hit that. The input impedance for the millivolts and the volts is 11 mega ohms. Well, let's talk about some AC voltages. Here's using the DMM check to uh, put a 100 hertz uh, AC square wave, and it reads it as 4.957. And on the uh, Keithley, it read as 4.99870. And it's a 1% plus 3, so that's well within the specifications. Let's look at uh, all the AC voltages I tested on the bench. You can see that the uh, 100 hertz one worked fine. But in the millivolts range for AC, we had a little trouble with the 1 millivolt reading. It came out as zero, which is definitely not right. So it missed one, but the other millivolt readings and volt readings up to six volts all worked uh, within the specification. Now this is a true RMS meter, but partially that's affected by its AC bandwidth. So it's uh, one volt, 3 dB cutoff came at three kilohertz. So that's pretty low but it's a pretty economical meter, so you really couldn't use this for audio uh, work, but it's uh, good for AC power work. Let's measure some current. First, we'll start out with uh, using the DMM check for the AC current. You see it gives you a little warning about the leads. So we'll change the leads. And there's your 0.999676, according to the Keithley. And this reads it as 0.98. So it's pretty close, well within its specifications. Well, let's do some DC currents. And again, when you switch it to current, it defaults to AC, so you got to remember to switch it to DC. Here's 0.89 microamps, and it shows up as 0.8. Here's 9.21 microamps, and it shows up as 9.1. Here's 99 microamps, and it shows up as 98.9. Here's 131.8 microamps, and it shows up as 131.7. Here's 1 milliamp, and it shows up at 1.00 milliamp. Here's 9.98 milliamps, and it shows up as 10 milliamps. Here's 99.4 milliamps, and it shows up as 99.5. All the measurements I made met the specifications as stated in the manual. They're pretty uh, wide specifications, but you have to give them credit. The current shunts for the amp range was 0 0.028 ohms. For the milliamps range, it was 1.65 ohms. And for the microamp range, is 100.63 ohms. They're all about typical. These are all the 6,000 count meters that I reviewed that are third-party safety tested and their accuracy specifications for the different ranges. Green being the highest accuracy specifications, yellow being the lowest, and then uh, the white background is in between. And as you can see that there's uh, two that are the lowest, which is the DC voltages, the low and the high, and also the DC amps all have the uh, worst specification. 
Of course, it's still not as bad as the uh, Fluke 17B Max, which many of its ranges are in lower specifications. Now it's time to measure some resistance values. As you can see, the default is continuity mode, so we got to change it to resistance. Let's zero the leads. This says the leads have no resistance. I don't believe it, but we have to go with what the meter says. Here's a 1.004 resistor, and it reads it as 1.4. Here's a 10.007 resistor. It reads it as 10.1. Here's a 100.069 ohm resistor, and it reads it as 100.6. Here's a 1.0001 kilo ohm resistor, and it reads it as 1.002. Here's a 10.002 kilo ohm, and it reads it as 10.01. Here's 100.02 kilo ohms, and it reads as 100.0. And a point, well, can't make, can't make up his mind, but we'll stick with zero. Here's a 0 0.9970 kilo ohm, and we read it as 0 0.99. Here's 9.97 mega ohm, and it reads it as 9.9. .9 that reads it at 9.97. Let's look at the bench measurements I made. The readings on the bench all met the specifications as stated in the manual, except of course the 100 meg couldn't be read, but it, it doesn't say it can read 100 meg, so that's okay. The test voltage is used in the resistance measurement. In the low range, it was 1.03 volts, and the medium range is 0.93 volts, and the high range was 0.51 volts. Now we're going to read some capacitance and usually you zero out the leads with the rail function if they have stray capacitance, but this meter doesn't read the stray capacitance of the leads. That's interesting. It didn't, lead, it didn't have any uh, residual resistance for the ohm range and it doesn't have any uh, stray capacitance for the capacitance range. So we'll see what we get. And, as usual, nowadays I do not measure the 10 and 100 picofarad capacitors because most meters, that's just too small. So we're going to start out with the film capacitor. Here's 1.005 and it reads it as 0.95. Here's a 9.921 nanofarad and it reads it as 10.24. Here's a 99.51 nanofarad, and it reads it as 100.3. Here's a 1.009 microfarad capacitor, and it reads it as uh, 1.000. Here's a 10.294 microfarad capacitor, and it reads it as 10.96. Here's 112.2 microfarads, and it reads it as 113.5. Here's a 944 microfarad capacitor, and it reads it as uh, 1,043 microfarads. Well, let's take a look at the uh, bench results of this. Well, as you can see by these values, they it met the specifications as stated in the manual. Of course, it is interesting that I'm getting uh, quite different readings than I got here, but that's okay. It still was in the specifications. It is time to do some diodes. Of course, our favorite diodes are LEDs. So let's get started. Well, as you can see, it reads the forward voltage and it lights the diode, but no beeps. Well, the yellow one, it reads the forward voltage, lights the diode, but no beep. The green one reads the forward voltage. It lights it, but it's a little dim. No beeps. Schottky diode reads the forward voltage. No beep. Small signal diode reads the forward voltage, no beep. Rectifier diode reads the forward voltage, no beep. There we have it for the diodes. Let's see what the test voltage was. Well, it uses 3.24 volts and has a maximum current of 0.97 milliamps. So, not too bad for the diodes. Those will work for the LEDs. Let's compare the accuracy specifications for resistance and capacitance for this group of meters. Well, as you can see, this meter did not fare very well in the capacitance and resistance. And 
almost all of the ranges, it is the worst specification of this group of meters. But for uh, $99, I guess that's you can't ask for much more. But if you notice, the uh, Unity, which is a $10 cheaper, has better specifications in almost all the areas except for one. And uh, if you moved up to the Bryman EV blog uh, BM235, you could definitely get a superior meter. Uh, and of course, um, uh, if you went with the Fluke 17B Max, you would not be getting much better of a meter. So uh, I would skip that one. So anyway, it's interesting to see where it falls. Well, it's continuity check time. And what do we do when it's time for continuity check? We bring out the Probe Masters. Let's see what happens. Well, it's not very fast. So, I'd say uh, if you're a continuity aficionado, you would not go with this. Now, it latches, but it latches too long. Well, let's look at the pros and cons of this meter. It's third-party safety tested by ETO for U.S. and Canada. Most of the measurements taken met the accuracy as specified in the manual. The fuses are accessible from the battery compartment. It has IP42 ratings, has a two-year warranty, and you can purchase this locally in the U.S. from Home Depot or Lowe's. Well, let's look at the not-so-good things about this meter. It did not meet its accuracy specifications for the 1 millivolt AC and 5 millivolt AC readings. It tied with the Fluke 17B Max for having the lowest accuracy specifications for 10 different ranges. The continuity has slow response time, and it beeps every time you change the rotary dial. Let's take a look at the battery compartment. As you can see, the battery compartment also has the fuses, so that's very handy. Well, who is this meter for? This meter is for somebody who needs a meter right now and wants to go up to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy one. If you want a meter in this $100 class, I would say uh, if you could wait a couple of days, order one on Amazon. You can get the Unity uh, 161D. It's a little more better accuracy specifications and uh, also you could spend a little bit more and get the EV blog uh, BM235, uh, which is uh, definitely a better meter, accuracy-wise. So uh, I definitely think about those, but if you need a meter that you want to go pick up today and use today, I guess this would be the one. But outside of that, I would, uh, I would skip it. Um, it. Sure, it's fine for many things, but if uh, you want a little bit more accuracy, uh, you want a, a little more features, you might want to spend a little more money. So, hope that helps. This is Tom, N8FDY, saying 73, and take it easy.